Hello everyone, welcome back to the LightBeans e-commerce tutorial. Today I will present Unit 9, Integrating Transactional Business Logic. The purpose for this series of tutorials is to help my students to understand how to use LightBeans IDE to build the e-commerce application. All materials in the presentation come from LightBeans.org website. The students might download the Slapshot 7 from the above website at the start point of this unit. The tasks we will finish in this unit are the following. First, we will overview the transaction. Then, we will examine the project Slapshot. Then, we will create the Old Manager EJB. Our first task is to overview the transaction. We will create Old Manager EJB to process the data. During this transaction, a new customer record is added, a new customer order record is added, new ordered product records are added according to the item's contents in the shopping cart. We will create a press order method which performs the three right actions by sequentially calling private help methods. Those private help methods are add a customer, add order, add ordered items. To Leverage EJB's container managed transaction service will only require two allocations. They are add transaction management allocation used to specify that any transactions occurring in the class are container managed. Second, add transaction attribute allocation used a method that invokes the transaction to specify that a new transaction should be created if one doesn't already exist yet. So this picture represents this transaction, how this will happen, how the order manager EJB, order manager EJB will handle the transaction. Basically in order manager EJB, there is a press order method. This press order method rely on the three private help methods that are called add a customer, add a order, and add ordered items. Those three methods will uh, interact with the database to add a customer to the database, add an order to the database, and add an order the items to the database. Our second task is to examine the project snapshot. This project snapshot is identical to the state of the project after completing the previous unit but with the following exceptions. First, the confirmation GSP page is fully implemented. Second, the forbobin.css style sheet includes rules specific to confirmation page implementation. So let us simulate a custom shopping online. Then we will see low data related to the order is displayed on the confirmation page. Open the letter B project IDE then you uh, make sure your affordable bin is here. Now, before you run it, make sure your database server is running. So you click on the servers, expand the database, look at my window here. This is my SQL server at a local host 3306 is disconnected. So that's uh, is not a good. So in order to make it running, I probably need to make sure uh, the database server is running. So how to check this? I open a terminal window on the <coughs> command line. I type my SQL admin version. Now, if your database server is running, then this supposed to display the server uh, version, but it didn't, so it's not running. If it's not running, you need to make it run. So I type sudo user local mysql support files my sql dot server start now upon this point it will ask you for the password this is the password uh, 
uh, you for you as a system administrator for your to your computer. So I will type my password. Then begin start my SQL. It is success. Once it is success, I go back to here to right click on my SQL server at local thirty three oh six. I click on start. Then I wait. Okay, my SQL start. Then I look at it, so I can see all those uh, database in my my SQL server. Now I can begin to debug my project. It take a while. By the way, uh, this project at Fobo Bean, you can download Snapshot Seven from the website. You start from this point. Okay. It's a little bit slow. Okay. Now here is. My Fobo Bean project Slapshot 7, which is provided by the tutorial website. After you download it, uh, run it, then you will get this uh, web page. Now, if you click on Earning Category, then you begin follow through the business steps, like how customer do a shop, do a shopping. You click on the category. Then add the items to the cards, to the cart, right? You add, add another item to the cart. So you shopping different thing. You add to the cart, add to the cart. Now, uh, you can view the cart. After you the car, you can continue shopping, right? You can add more things to the cart. For example, then you can. Uh, View the card. You can proceed to check out. Now you get to this page. Suppose I type some information, like uh, cs. Dot mass. Dot educator. Then email cs. Dot mass. Dot educator. At gmail. Dot com. And phone number is seven eight five blah 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 blah. The address one hundred Main Street. So suppose okay, credit card number blah blah. All the same. Now, if you submit the purchase, it will navigate you to the confirmation page. If you notice in this confirmation page, nothing uh, really displayed. No data related to the order is displayed on the confirmation page. In fact, in this project current state, the application doesn't do anything with the data from the checkout form. By the end of this tutorial unit, the application will get a customer data and use it to process an order. In its final state, the application will display a summary of the processed order on the confirmation page. Remove the user's shopping cart and terminate the user's session. Step two, which is create order manager EJP. In order to do so, you can open the new file wizard. You can in the, do the command N, open the new file. This is slightly different from the tutorial because the category we choose here is enterprise. Java beans. Then you choose the file type is the session bean. You click on next. The session beans name you will put as order manager. Okay. Then you want to put in the package called session. You already have a package name called session. Then keep all the rest as default choice. Then you click on finish. Once you click on finish, you will say this order manager, this Java file is opened 
ready for you to edit it. That's finish your step two. Create order manager EJP. Now step three, we will handle request parameter. To do so, you open this uh, controller package, double click on controller server.java. In uh, let us examine something here first. If you notice, there is a URL pattern purchase. Where this pattern come from? This pattern, if you go back to this web page GSP file, you look at this uh, checkout. Okay, there is a form. This form's action has is a URL value is purchase. And in this form, he will try to pass the name, email, phone, address, all this uh, information to the next page. Okay, so in your controller servlet, there is a session of code to handle this. If you go down to nine one hundred ninety, you will say this is the place you will handle the purchase action. Because the user pass data equals slash purchase. That is the purchase action where in your form at the page checkout GSP page. So you will delete this at the following line of code. If cut not equal now, then you will do what? Extract user data from request. Now, so you have string name equal request dot get parameter. So you can just do this, this way, right? Get a parameter, then this parameter is name. Then you can have string email equal request dot get parameter then this will be email then you can have a string phone equal request dot get parameter then this will give you Form. Get a parameter as this spell here. Then you will have string address equal request dot get parameter address. Then you have string CD region equal request dot get parameter cd region and the string credit card number equal request dot get parameter credit card now all those parameters you can get parameter all those parameters you can get when uh, that checkout page is submitted. But you have to have code to handle this, right? That is where you put the code. OK, this will uh, finish your step three, which is handle request parameters. Now, step four, implement the press order and the help method. This step is a little bit longer. So let's see. First, in this controller server.java file, you need to add a reference to the order manager EJP. So we will go up, scroll up uh, at this place. You will have add EJP. Then you get a private, we call order manager 
order manager. Now, when you do this, you will say there is an error message here. You put your mouse here, you will say, he said, cannot find the class order manager. Now, you can you let the IDE automatically import this class. You just click on it, he will say, add import session dot order manager. You just click on this. So the problem solved. Okay. Then you will add the following code to the controller server.java, which is go to the bottom uh, where we just add here. We will say integer order ID equal order manager dot press order. Now pay attention. I even don't have a press order method yet, but I just begin to call this method. I even didn't define this method, declare this method in order manager class yet, but I just go ahead and use it. This is a good thing about this IDE. Critical number and a card. Now, if you have this, you say, uh, there is an error message. If you replace this, he say cannot find the symbol. Uh, order manager. Okay, that's why I have to correct by this. Now, then he say cannot find the method. Now, if you click on it, he say create a method. Then you just click. Now he will create this method for you. You try to use a method that you will not declared yet, but it will not cause you any problem because the IDE give you a hint and say there is no such a method in order manager class. Then he say, well, you do you want to create one? If you just accept it, you say you want to create one, then it will create one for you. Now, let us go to order manager data Java. Okay. First, you notice that the card dot shopping cart. This class has been imported. Now let's implement this method. First, let us delete this. Okay. So we will first create a customer. Equal add customer. You give a name. Give an email. Give a phone number, give an address, give a city, region, give a credit card number. You can create a customer. So create a customer and add. Now, then the customer order. Equal add order. You give a customer and the card. Based on this, you can create a customer order. Then add order the items. Then add this order items to the order from the card. Okay. Now we have all those import. You can type command shift i to fix those import. Let's say first we need say this uh, after fix import they say the method they don't know. So you click on here. It's a created add customer method. You just click on it. It will automatically add this private add customer method for you. Same thing to fix this add order. Click on it. Now then fix this uh, add order the items. So this also fixed. Now finally this method did a return an uh, energy. The energy to return is the customer uh, the, the order ID. So you return order dot get ID. Return the order ID. Now we need to begin to implement those three functions, private hyper function. First one is add a customer. So this function I will first create a customer equal new customer 
when for this new customer I begin to set up dot set a name which is a given name I can say now actually we can have an easy way to do this I like to do this way I just copy and every time I say paste customer data set email then I will give an email which email is passed then paste dot set a phone I will give a phone number then paste dot set address give the address then paste dot set the city region then I will give them the city region from the parameter pass to it then customer dot set critical number then this one I give them critical number oh actually it's already there so then I return the customer okay so we can similarly implement all those add order function of course add an order function first we need a set of customer order customer order order equal u customer order okay then order dot set customer which is a given customer then order dot set amount then will be bigger decimal dot value of cut dot get a total Now here is set a customer a misspell, so now fix it. Then big decimal value of card got a total. I believe it's a uh, parameter card, so it's a lowercase. Now big decimal, you need a fix the input uh, command shift i, so fix the input. Then you have to return the customer order, so return order. Right now. Last private help method is add order item. So let's do this one. First, I create a local variable list. This shopping cart items item for items equal cart dot get items. So I get a shopping cart items. Then I need to iterate through shopping cart and create ordered products. So for shopping cart item, let's call it shopping cart item in this items list what I'm going to do first I will get the product ID equal shopping cart item dot get a product dot get ID okay then I will set up primary key object ordered product primary key ordered product primary key equal new order product primary key okay. then this ordered product 
my key dot set customer order ID is order dot get ID. And I will say order the product pk dot set product id is the product id the next step i will create order the item using a primary key object so what i'm going to do is order the product I still call ordered item equal view ordered product ordered product kick then I will set the quantity Ordered item dot set quantity is a shopping cart item dot get quantity. So now I, from the shopping cart items, I begin to get the order the item for each one. Set up his quantity, get his uh, created this ordered item. Okay, now we need to fix all this input. So I push Command Shift I. Oh, order the pro order order the product PK cannot be solved. So I need to cancel this. So I need to go back check. Order the product PK. I fix this one first. Okay. Now try again. Then shopping card item as may misspell shopping card, so cancel it. Shopping card item, so it's here. Okay. Now control. Now yes, we choose this Java UTL list. So just click OK. Now, all this thing fixed except this one. Except the order the product PK dot set product. D is product ID is same set. It's a non-static set of product ID cannot be referred as static. Oh, okay. The reason is here I use capital O, I need to change it to little O because it's the object order the product PK. Okay. Our next task is utilizing GPAs entity manager. As was mentioned in adding entity class and session beans. The Entity Manager API is included in GPA and is responsible for performing persistence operations on the database. In that for being project, all of the EJB's employee Entity Manager to demonstrate that, let us open any session for cadre beans in the editor and note that the class uses at persistence context allocation to express a dependence on a container managed entity manager and its associated persistence context at 4 bin PU as specified in the persistence XML file. For example, let us open product for CAD class. You use Control Shift O. Then we can say go to product. Probably I did a capital P. Product for Java. Okay, then we click on OK. If you look at this one, you will say have add persistence context unit name equal a full bin pu. Then you have a private entity manager em. Okay, so now uh, to be able to write it to the database, the order the manager EJB must take uh, some similar measure. Like you need to execute some 
MySQL statement. With the entity manager instance, we can then modify the help method at the customer, at the order, at the ordered item, so that the entity object that created are writing to the database. Okay, let us start from the uh, order manager class. So we can go to that class. Actually, it's here. You can find it here. Okay. So first, let us start from here. I create something called at persistent persistence context. Then I can use unit name equal at four bobbing pu. Private entity manager em. Okay. Now, of course, we can always uh, use uh, Control Shift I to fix the input. Okay. Now, then for each method, before it return, I will persistent do the persistent to, with the database em dot persist then I will persist in customer okay now here the same thing I will for this add order I will persistence the order so em dot persistent then I will persistence of order basically write the order to the database okay then for this for each uh, ordered item, I will persistent this ordered item. So em dot persistent persist ordered item. Okay. So I have all this. The entity manages persistent method doesn't immediately write the target object to the database. To describe this more accurately, the persistent method places the object in the persistence context. This means that the entity manager takes on the responsibility of ensuring that the entity object is synchronized with the database. Think of persistence context as an intermediate state used by the entity manager to pass entities between the object rim and the relational rim, hence the term object relational mapping. What is the scope of the persistence context? If you open the IDE's Java Dark Index search in the, on the Mac computer, you can use shift function F1. Let's type persistence context. Then search. Now, if we look at the persistence context tab, then you will see this specifies whether a transaction scoped or extended persistent context is to be used in persistence context. If we start specified, a transaction scoped persistent context is used. So, in, according to your tutorial, a transaction scope the persistent context is created at the start of the transaction and terminated when the transaction ends. An extended persistent context applies to state for, state for session being only and spans multiple transactions. The Java documentation also informs us that the Java X dot persistence persistent context type dot transaction is the default value for the type element. Therefore, although we didn't specify that the entity manager place objects in a transaction scoped persistent context, this is in fact how a container managed entity manager behaves by default. At this stage, you may assume that Transaction or no transaction, the order manager is now able to successfully write entity objects to the database. Let's run the project, say if this is true.
Okay, let's us follow the business logic, simulate customer shopping online, add a sense to the car, do a different category, add more sense to the car, then proceed to check out. At this point, let us input some information. For example, Hugo Ryash email is at dot com. Just we just use whatever on the tutorial. Of course, you can mark up anything you want. Okay, let's say address. And the credit card number, then you click on the submit purchase. Oh, we have an internal server error. We have javax.ejb.ejb exception. Let us go to this to open his output window. You can type command four, I believe. Yeah, this output window. Then you click on Glassfish server. Then you say what happened. The cost by Java non Java dot non dot allow point exception. Let's click on this session dot add manager dot add order the item link. Then you will bring you to the line that cost this allow point. Now to understand why order dot get ID method returns log because here order that get id this method will return you log okay why consider what the code is actually trying to accomplish the get id method attempts to get the id of an order which is currently in the process of being created since the id is an auto incrementing primary key the database automatically generate the value only when the record is added. One way to overcome this is to manually synchronize the persistence context with the database. This can be accomplished using Entity Manager's flush method. Let us go to add order items here. From the beginning, I manually persistence this. I call em dot flush. So I manually persistence synchronize the persistent context with the database. Now let's run the project again. Maybe I should uh, stop the previous one. Oh, no. Don't need. Okay, add it to the car. Add it to the car, Mercury, then add it to the car. Let's proceed to check out. We do the same thing. Then I use the same email. Then I use the same phone number. Then I use the same address. Then I type the same credit card number. Then I submit the purchase. Now, this time, it successfully bring us to the purchase page, which means uh, the transaction goes through smoothly. Now, let's switch back to IDE, and uh, I want to uh, go to the servers, and I check my database. Say, this link is broken. Let us connect it, type in the password. Now fixed, expanded, you have a football bin database, you have a table here, you right click any table, I probably want to click uh, the customer table, then let's view data. Okay, then let us see the result execution, probably I should, uh, where is it? Yeah, here. Now you see all these customers. Okay, I have those customer added.
Our next step is to set up the transaction programmatically. A transaction's primary function is to ensure that all operations are performed successfully. And if not, then nine of the individual operations is performed. So in order to guarantee that, what we will do is this. We will place all those three help, private helper functions at the customer, at the order, at the order the items, these three functions into a try block. If one of them failed, then we will go to the catch block. In the catch block, we will go back all those transactions. Let us do this. First, I need to go to the order manager.java. In this one, I first will add annotation, add transaction management transaction management type dot container okay let us use command shift i to fix the input uh, i misspell container container now everything is okay then i want to place this is uh, three, this four nine into a try block. So I can type try. Then I will use catch exception ex and do this. Okay. Now I begin to cut and paste. These four lines into here. Of course, I can use my face indentation is good. If an exception is caught, which means one of these three functions at a customer, at a order, at a ordered items, one of those three functions failed, then we will go to the catch block and roll back all those transactions and return zero. So I will use context dot set go back only and return zero. Now if you notice the context is an unknown variable so because we miss something. First we miss the, the allocation so I did a use allocation transaction uh, attribute then the transaction attribute type is required now for this one let's fix the input so I'm not sure the context I still don't have Oh, because we also miss, uh, I believe we also miss some uh, at a resource. Yeah. So I will go here. Also type uh, a notation at resource. Then this resource is private session context context. Now we just need to use command shift i to fix the import. Then we just accept all, I guess. What we have done here is this. We use add resource annotation to grab a session context. Then at this catch block, if the any transaction field, then we will use the set rollback method to roll back all those transactions, or we can say undo all those transactions if one of those is failed. That's why we equivalent treated those three as a whole. Only if all those three successful, uh, operation successful, then we can say this transaction is successful. Okay, let's run the program. If we run the project, 
we follow the business process flow. Then we proceed to check out. If you type the name, we just use the same name, same email, same phone number, because it's the same customer. Let us use the same address, then credit card 1111222, or we just don't type any credit card. Then I submit the purchase. Now, if you go back to the IDE, look at his output window, which is here. If you look at the glass fish server, you notice there are some banding, okay? They also have all those banded things here. Okay, that's it. Banding, six parameter banding, right? Then this is banding, four parameter banding. What happened here? Uh, this those text indicate output from the Eclipse link. If you recall, uh, in the adding entity classes and the session bin, we set Eclipse links login level to be fast. You can find this in the file called persistence XML because we set up this property. Uh, Eclipse link dot login login dot level is finished. Now pay attention. Actually, in his snapshot seven, his persistent dot XML actually miss this part. It not implement this part. It's a bug. Well, I cannot say it's a bug. They just forgot to implement this part. So, if you use his Tutorial Slapshot 7 works through this uh, unit to this step. Then you try to look at the uh, server's Glassfish server, his log. Then you will not see this until you add this property, then rerun the project. Then you will be able to see whatever the tutorial. Uh, says. So now we have successfully integrated transaction into the Fobo Bean project. Now we can download the snapshot R8 to examine the code and complete the request. So in this case, what I'm going to do, I will go to open the project since I already downloaded the snapshot 8. Okay, then I open this project. Uh, here is the snapshot 8. If you compare the snapshot, uh, look at the snapshot 8, you look at this session, look at this uh, order manager. Now you can see he has another method called get order details. We did not implement this method in this tutorial. So this leave to the student to study this, okay? And also, if you examine this project, you will see he will have another uh, package called validate, and he has a validator Java, okay? To validate uh, all those user input information when the user try to submit the purchase. For example, they can validate the email address, can validate uh, the phone number if all those input have the correct uh, format. Okay, let us close this snapshot seven, which we finished. Then examine this snapshot eight. Okay, let's see what kind of validation we will have. First, let us run the project. Say. What happened? Now, it seems like the same thing. We go through the business uh, logic flow. Then we proceed to check out. As again, let us input the same customer with the same email address, with the same phone number, 
with the same address and as as input the same credit card now if you submit then he will say please enter a valid credit card number so we say it contains the functionality to do the form validation form validation is the process of checking that a form has been filled incorrectly before it is processed this is not only adds user to providing meaningful feedback for fields with invalid interest but it also serves to sort any malicious attempts to submit content and could adversely affect processing or storage there are two primary methods for validate forms server side in our case we will use java to do that and the client side in our case uh, using the javascript both methods are usually essential for providing a present user experience as well as robust security for your application client side validation is useful for offering immediate feedback to the user without the need to initiate a round trip between the browser and the server. As such, it can stop network traffic and decrease the server load. Modern forms of client-side validation are often implemented to provide immediate, as you type, field specific feedback to the user. Client-side JavaScript is run on the browser, and the browsers generally allow JavaScript to be disabled. For this reason alone, your application cannot rely on client-side validation as the sole mean of guarding against the malformed or nefarious input. Server-side validation checks should therefore be performed when form data reaches the server. Data is extracted from the request and checked prior being processed and or stored. If a validation error detects, the server responds by return the form to the user with an appropriate message. If all data passes validation, data is converted to a different format if it's required. So we have three uh, sub-tasks in our last uh, task, validating the, and converting user input. We will first check client-side validation, then we check server-side validation, then we say, uh, the data conversion. Let us say, first say the client side validation. Now, if we continue from here, for example, if I don't type the name, then you say he gave you immediate feedback. This field is required. So I have to type a name. Now, uh, for example, if I give a email address, say if he is smart enough, immediately load my email address is not one. Okay, you see, hello, the email address is not a cracker because I missed this ad. For example, if I missed it, dot com, see if they know that. Yeah, they also know this is not a valid email address. So put it dot com. Okay, we already see he already can detect the valid credit card. Now, what part does this job? Let us go back to the IDE. Snapshot also include uh, a GS photo. Let me make this smaller so I can expand this. You see, it include a GS photo. In this GS photo, it include a jQuery 1.4.2 GS as well as a script for the validation plugin, which is jQuery dot validate Data.js. The core library is referenced in the application header.jsp file. If you open this header.jsp file, if you look, uh, look at this, this core library is referenced here. See? So we will use this. Well, the validation plug description is referenced directly in the checkout.jsp. If you look at the checkout.jsp, you see it's checkout.jsp. Okay? Because in this checkout.jsp, you really 
which is the uh, checkout page, you really need to give client side validation. Okay. So, and uh, the plugin is customized to shoot the checkout form based on available documentation. So, let's say this is a script type text, JavaScript, then this those code or list here. So they can check the rules. They have rules. Name is required. That means email is required. Is true, and the email style is true. Here you can understand this field must be uh, cannot be empty. Second, this field must set, satisfy this email rule. Okay. Now, for example, this phone number. The minimum length at least is nine. So if you do the phone number, suppose I just type uh, this as a phone number, then say please enter at least nine characters. Okay. I believe phone number probably did all be digit. So suppose if I type something else, say say please enter a valid phone number because it's not a phone number. Phone number cannot have a character. Our second task is to examine server side validation. The purpose of server-side validation is to ensure that each piece of data is in a format that is ready for further process or is acceptable for storage. By format, we mean both the data type as well as the size of the piece of data. The generated JPA in TD classes are guaranteed to map their properties to the appropriate data type of the corresponding database table columns. When relying on these entity classes, we need not only make sure that user data can be applied to create or update entity classes, but that the size of the data is appropriate for the data type of the database column. For example, consider the checkout forms credit card number field. Client side validation check standard into the data doesn't include letters because the maximum length attribute in the HTML markup is set to be 19. User cannot enter more than 19 characters into this field. Let us see what this means. For example, I already have 16 character number. Now I type another three digit. It's okay. But if I try to type more, it will not allow me. The code is here. The maximum length for this credit card input field is 19. Okay? So server-side validation also places a limit at 19 characters. Keep in mind that the data type of the critical number, the cc-number column in the database customer table is a varchar 19. That means it's a char variable with a size 19. We did this in the step three of design the data model, adding entity properties. Now, Consider what would happen if the data type of the cc-number column is set to variable char 16 and a user enters a number that is 19 characters long. When the checkout form is submitted, the credit card parameter is extracted from the request and converted into a string so that it becomes a cc-number property in a newly created customer object. Because 16 is the maximum number of the characters the database column will hold, the database server will either trunk the number to 16 characters or produce a MySQL data truncation error, depending on the SQL model set for the server. In this manner, by not having client and server side validation properly handle the size, that means the nines of this data received for the critical number, we risk a failed attempt to placing an order, or perhaps even worse, a trunked critical number, which obviously won't allow payment. The server-side validation in a FOBOBIN project is implemented by means of validator class. The controller server creates a validator object and calls its validator form method on the user data. Now let us check the code. 
you first look at the controller sovereign class is in our source package in the controller and you look at the controller sovereign class they will first create the uh, validation arrow flag equal force at the beginning I believe is you need to look at the uh, purchase part purchase is a uh, to post, right? Yeah, purchase to post. Okay, now look at here. Validated the user data. Okay, the first uh, validation error flag equal false, then equal validated dot validated form. Okay, so where your validated come from? Here, in case to post the method. They first declare a local variable of type validator. Then it will use this validator to validate the form. Uh, pay attention, the validator form return you true or false. When it return you true, it means there is some error. So if return true, then he will, uh, the user pass still check out. That means he will stay in that uh, check out the page. Of course, let us check the validator.java, the validator form method. You see, he has a arrow flag equal force. That means begin, you assume everything is okay. Then he has all this name, arrow, email, arrow, phone, arrow, address, arrow, city, range, arrow, credit card number, uh, arrow are all the boolean values. Then he begin check all those uh, name. If uh, something wrong with the name, then he will set the arrow flag is true, name arrow is true, then set the attributes, uh, name arrow is the name uh, arrow, right? So everything, they uh, did the similar thing. I just want you pay attention is his, in this server side check, for example, the credit card number check, he didn't really check if this credit number, credit card number is validated. Uh, if you type uh, 1111222233444444 like those in the real life we know that's not a validated, uh, valid credit card number but he will pass this server side check. Okay so let us uh, uh, test his server side check will work. In order to do so one thing we need uh, Disable our JavaScript and our uh, web browser. To do so for the Firefox, you type about configure. Now you say I will be careful, I promise. Then you type JavaScript search. Then he will say JavaScript enabled. You click on it, double click, change it to false. Then you need to restart your Firefox. Well, let us uh, then run the project. Then I try to do some shopping. Then I press uh, add more item. Yes. Then proceed to check out. Now, if I try to submit, I will be able to pass the client side validation because there is no client side validation because the JavaScript is disabled. Now, this are uh, all come from the server side. The server side. Now, where this uh, code come from? If you look at this code in the checkout page, checkout JSP. Okay. Now you say here. The action is purchase, the method is post, that means use the controller sovereign to post the method, right? And your action will when the user pass equal purchase, okay? This is where you did the server side validation. Okay, now look at the server side validation. If the validation error flag is not an input, that means you do have 
error flag become is true, that means you do have error. Then we'll depend on what error it is, right? So uh, please provide the valid entry for the following field. If name error is not empty, you need to say provide the name. Now look at here. Name, email, phone, address, because they're all you didn't input anything, so of course we'll not pass the server side validation. And this name arrow, email arrow, phone arrow, they are all get from this validate method, where a validate form method. You say you all set attributes, name arrow as name arrow, email arrow as email arrow. Those attributes are uh, uh, set as request attributes. And this request attributes, of course, will be passed to uh, with the request. So that's why all this happened. Now, the funny thing is, as I said, this credit card validation is not uh, accurate. So you suppose if I submit, you say, can I accept your credit card? But we know in the real life, this credit card is not valid. But the client side validation, he will not accept this credit card. This is because uh, let us check uh, client side the checkout, how he validate the credit card. This, this is because he has this documentation, credit card is true. In this documentation, they specify more restriction on the credit card format. So the client side validation actually validate if the credit card is valid or not is more accurate than this, our implementation of server-side validation. The last subtask is data conversion. Sometimes after data has passed validation, you may need to convert it into a different format. For example, like people want to enter the <coughs> phone number as 316 <clears throat> dash two three four dash five six seven eight like this is the way people like to enter the phone number or people like to enter the phone number like this three one six put it in the parentheses then uh, space two three four dash five six seven eight now but uh, the phone number stored in your credit uh, in your database will be just three one six two three four Five six seven eight. This ten numbers without any space, without any princess, without any dash. So in that case, your application should be able to convert those data form, uh, this input to the data format that your uh, database table will accept. Now this is not implement in our uh, affordable beam project, but the student can practice this for your own good. This is the end of Unit 9, Integrating Transactional Business Logic. Our next unit will be adding language support. Again, all the material come from netbeans.org website. See you next time. Goodbye.